when we constructed one sample estimates, we started with a point estimate. From there, we added and subtracted some margin of error to construct a confidence interval. So if we're talking about proportions, we would start with p hat, our sample proportion, add and subtract that margin of error to get that range of values, the upper and lower bounds for our confidence interval. So in this section, we want to start talking about how we do the same thing but with two sample estimates. So the process for creating a two sample estimate is similar. Really the only thing that changes is our point estimate. So since we're dealing with two samples, instead of our sample proportion being just p hat, we'll have two different sample proportions, which we can refer to as p1 and p2. And more specifically, our point estimate will be the difference of those two values. So we'll take that point estimate, add and subtract a margin of error, which will give us, again, the upper and lower bounds for our confidence interval. So just like with one sample estimates, our point estimate, again in this case the difference of our two sample proportions, will be the exact center of that interval, and then it'll be stretched in each direction by that same amount, that same margin of error. We still have conditions that we'll need to verify in order to construct these two sample estimates. For proportions, we'll need both samples to be random and independent. We'll need large enough samples for both studies to expect at least 10 successes and 10 failures. And if sampling is done without replacement, we need a population that's 10 times larger than our sample. So again, we'll assume that conditions one and three are met for any problems that we deal with, which will leave us with verifying that second condition. So again, checking that we have 10 successes and 10 failures, except now we'll need to verify that for two separate sets of results. So to do that, we can take our first sample size times our first sample proportion and verify that that's greater than or equal to 10 and then take our first sample times one minus our first sample proportion and verify that that's greater than or equal to 10. <clears throat> so that'll tell us that we have at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures in one of the samples. So then we'll take our second sample size times our second sample proportion, our second sample size times one minus our second sample proportion, and verify that those results are both greater than or equal to 10. So we'll have four different relatively simple calculations that we need to verify, but we need to make sure that those conditions are met before we proceed with this process of constructing confidence intervals.